So guys, today we are going to we are going to try to understand uh, what is candidate and running configuration. So far, we have seen a single pass approach where we have uh, learned that the latency of processing the task is decreases. That's why the Palo Alto uses a single pass approach. And Palo Alto also have the component for the single pass parallel processing, which they also call SP3 architecture. SP3 is nothing but single pass parallel processing, right? If you see there is a 3P, that's why they say SP3, right? Single pass parallel processing. Now, let's see why they call it single pass parallel processing. It's because in single pass uh, architecture, they have two additional components. Number one is your single pass software and number two parallel processing hardware all right so when i talk about the single pass software we already know what it is and how the software is reduce the latency in parallel processing hardware they come up with a certain things just let's recap few things here so in single pass parallel processing architecture we'll be getting the software where you have single pass software okay and you'll be getting planes where you have a data plane and control plane which comes under parallel processing uh, hardware so if I draw like this it will be not wrong so here if I say parallel or processing hardware so here I'll be having two plane one is your control plane and one will be your data plane right and when i say the control plane there are multiple things coming into the picture like you know your networking then your security and your content right Likewise, when I say the data plane, the data plane contains the actual processing things where whatever process from the control plane will enter to the data plane and this is the actual thing what we get. Okay. So this combined thing they call it sp3 architecture okay i hope uh, this part is clear now when we talk about the configuration so the palo alto have the fundamental that whenever palo alto uh, I mean the Palo Alto is designed in such a way that whenever you create any configuration or you perform any changes on the configuration it goes into the candidate uh, candidate config and once the changes from the candidate config is commit then it goes to the running config This is a high level thing but let's uh, 
go a bit deeper here and uh, try to understand how this thing uh, works. So consider uh, you are an user, okay. If I say a user, okay, is trying to do some configuration on the management side, okay. First thing what he will do, he do the config changes. Config. Uh -oh. Let me drop this. Config changes. Right. First, he will do the config changes from the management side or you can say in a hardware they have panorama or you can perform the changes on the firewall itself okay and once he try to save this changes it saves in candidate config all right and when he try to save it's saved with two things one we call it named config save for example uh, the firewall give or you can do any name here and it will save in the xml format right or it can be saved like snapshot right and firewall give it name like a snapshot.xml basically this happens when you try to save the config right this thing gets saved into the xml format in some you know the memory okay so whenever you try to do any sort of changes into the config it will save in this format into some memory okay and basically from this memory you have the flexibility to load the config you know you can export the config right and here only you can you know whatever the config you have if this user want to import something he can import into this memory as well right now this all work whatever i have just explained with respect to the candidate config if i named here we are talking about the candidate config it happens under control plane control plane so whatever the changes we do with respect to the initial config change it, with respect to the candidate config is happen onto the control plane and when you perform commit commit is nothing but you are just pushing the config to the firewall then it we, it goes or that config act as a running config mm -hmm. uh, act as a running config right and then the data plane come into the picture so basically whatever you do with the candidate config you're talking about the control plane and once you come into those changes that config actually come into the play and then we are talking about the data plane so key points we need to note here and it's very important that whenever you know some system event occurs 
like say by default due to the admin activities the firewall get reboot or maybe the power failure whatever it is the firewall automatic revert the current version of the config to the previously running config what that means say if you are having say a config a running currently okay this is the running config of the firewall but you were doing some changes into the firewall and you were having some candidate cam config okay you have not performed the commit 8 however you tried to perform the commit okay and after say 80 percent of commit happens and due to the one or the other reason the reboot take place okay so firewall will not load this config which is supposed to go to the into the firewall as a running config it will not load this config okay firewall automatically go to the the config which was previously there the config a right so this is important thing now uh, the candidate config this guy it can be saved as a snapshot or the candidate config can be saved as default snapshot as I told before snapshot or snapshot dot xml or can be stored or saved as a custom name so you can give any name here say xyz dot xml the one which you want the name to be there however the firewall does not automatically have the candidate configuration stored into some sort of persistent memory so this candidate configuration which you save it went away when the reboot occurs and firewall don't have anything like a persistent memory where this candidate config saves right the firewall don't have that so you must manually save the config uh, and commit that config to the running config so if you save the candidate config to the current snapshot to restore changes you made between the last commit the lab last snapshot using the reward to the saved config can be an option for you what that means by default if you make some candidate config and due to one or the another reason you are not manually saved it it will go away or faint away when the reboot occurs but if you saved manually with some uh, say default save method which is snapshot you can get this config using restore method so that is possible So guys, I hope you found this video informative and thanks for watching this video.